I feel like uh, I am not safe being in Nakuru or anywhere in the country because My name is Joseph Openda, the chairperson of the Nakuru Journalists Association. Here with me is uh, Ms. Catherine Wanjeri, who was uh, uh, involved in a shooting incident on July 16th, where she was shot by police officers in the line of duty. Uh, with me here is uh, the vice chairperson of the Nakuru Journalists Association, Mr. Gilbert Nyeno. So today we are here at the Nakuru Central Police Station to report uh, an incident that has been happening, things that have been happening since that incident happened. Um, as you are aware, uh, this matter has been under investigation. The police have been, uh, the uh, IPOA took over investigations and since then the investigations have been uh, going on. But um, while the investigations were going on, uh, Ms. Wanjeri has also been uh, coming to Nakuru for treatment. Uh, she, she was given uh, uh, some visiting dates to visit her doctors to check her uh, progress. But uh, anytime she comes to this place, she has been receiving, uh, uh, she has been uh, experiencing uh, some incidents that uh, we feel amount to intimidation and threat to her life. So today we came uh, to report uh, these issues. Um, one, she has been receiving calls. Anjeri has been receiving calls from unknown persons. These people are calling her without identifying themselves, informing her that uh, they have information that can lead to, that can help her know the person who uh, shot her. But uh, the fact that this person doesn't want to, to be identified uh, we feel uh, uh, like she, the, the person doesn't have uh, good intentions. And since then, she has been forced to um, uh, 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 um, avoid some calls, just to avoid receiving these kinds of calls, because uh, the person was requesting her to, for a meet-up uh, so that he, he or she can show her the person who shot her. Uh, also, she has been... Um, accosted by some vehicles which she doesn't know uh, what they want because at around her premises where she stays there have been some movement of vehicles something that uh, never used to happen before the incident happened and uh, we felt as the association it was important for her to make this formal complaint to the police so that uh, investigations can be done and uh, the people who are doing this the people who are following her and calling her can be identified and her security can be uh, guaranteed. Uh, with the investigation, we feel like uh, these, in, uh, these incidents or these intimidations have something to do with the investigations that are going on and uh, possibly maybe the person might be wanting her to drop the push for justice, but uh, we, would want, we would want to ask the, uh, the agencies involved, the IPOA, the ODPP, and the police to cooperate so that to ensure that uh, this matter comes to a conclusion. We want to see justice take its course because we feel the investigations have really taken time and uh, these things are happening uh, because of this delay. And if this person can be identified, the person, uh, the culprit who did the shooting, if they can be identified in time, maybe we can avoid uh, these kind of uh, intimidations. Uh, at the moment, the IPOA says uh, they are still waiting for a report from the DCI uh, before they can uh, forward the file to the ODPP. And I uh, just want to request this agency, the, ODP, uh, the uh, DCI, to uh, speed up this investigation so that we know the next uh, course of action. Um, uh, we, we also want, I also want to bring to the attention of the public that uh, a number of journalists have reported also receiving calls from these people. Uh, who claim to have this information. But the funny thing is that they are not identifying themselves. So uh, I don't know how this information is going to help us if you cannot, you just give information, we cannot verify that information, and you also don't want to identify yourself. So we would want to request them to kindly, if they have any information that can, may lead to uh, or may help this case, 
to report to the IPOA and share this information with them so that uh, they use it as part of their investigation instead of just calling random journalists without giving us information that can help us uh, follow up with this matter in any way. So uh, as an association, we really want to condemn uh, whoever is trying to intimidate our member and uh, they, we want to call them to stop. Let them stop and if anything, let them approach the relevant agencies and share this information with them. Uh, so uh, maybe I can give Wanjeri also say something. Uh, my name is Catherine Wanjeri Karioki. Um, the journalist who was shot on the 16th of July 2024. Uh, I was here at Nakuru Central Police Station to report uh, on a case, I feel like uh, I am not safe being in Nakuru or anywhere in the country because, um, and it's so, it's funny how um, the person who called me called me when uh, I landed in Nakuru and uh, apparently I was having a doctor's appointment that, that day. And um, uh, they, they gave some, information and actually the, like uh, the, your question they, they insisted on calling me back but I did not pick it uh, after they gave me that information and dared me not to uh, to to share that number with the police uh, with with anyone whether the police or anyone and uh, since that day Naguru has been a place that I don't feel safe or anywhere else and then also the vehicles the movement of vehicles that have been following me and uh, um, it makes me feel not so safe and not yeah, comfortable. Do you, do you think uh, they're trying to stop you from you know, going after justice? Of course, because that kind of intimidation would make you scared would make you get to like get to a situation where you want to drop this case uh, and apparently it's a, it's a thought that I've been having because you know like um, I felt if maybe they want to reach and to me and if they cannot they will go to my family so uh, it's it's something it's a thought that I've been having but um, the association has told me that the case is ongoing and like you see now uh, we've been told that there is a hold at the DCI and the more the case uh, the case uh, takes long the the longer I'll feel I'm not I'm not because I, I know and we all know that the person who shot me is out there he's still working and we don't know what powers they have in the National Police Service uh, Department. So I don't know what what protection they have. So and uh, like I would say, I'm just a normal journalist. So I, for me, I have no protection because it's a police officer who shot me. So if it's a police officer who shot me, I'm just a mere human being loitering around Nakuru and everywhere that I go. I don't feel like I am safe. Yes. One number or the person who changes the number. Now you know uh, when when that call came and it was from that particular number, I have received m m hundreds and hundreds of calls of missed calls. But now I I I don't pick uh, new numbers. What I tell them if you if you want, please text back. So if it's someone who is uh, who is genuinely want to get to me, they will text me. So. Calls, yes, have been receiving numerous calls from different numbers. Yes. Unknown numbers. Unknown numbers. Uh, yeah. Uh, have you maybe referred these people to the police if they have information maybe they take to the board? You see, um, this person is coming telling you uh, they know I am a police officer. That conversation that we had, I'm a police officer, and uh, I know the particular person who. And actually, they're using terminologies to make you think that maybe I, I have a feeling he's a police officer because even the terminologies, do ammunition, do whatever. You know those two terms to a police station. So yeah, um, it's maybe they had done their homework so well. So maybe we can use a work as a police officer. So uh, I don't know what their intention was. So I. I, I never got that time here to tell them come to the police officers, you know, like, and you know, it's only human for you to be desperate to get your justice. But now, after you sit down and think about it, now when you realize 
maybe this person is actually the person who shot me, who is trying to, to lure me. Yeah. What is the, do you have like uh, one of the calls that you can say? Mm -hmm. And there was a direct threat, Kabisa Kumba. Uh, you felt like it's because of the case that you're following up. No, someone wouldn't tell you you don't don't dare share my number. There is no other threat more than that. Because if you if you if like now I share to be honest, I don't know what is going to happen to me, because I don't know whether that person is a police officer. So even when I was coming here, I was feeling no, I'm, I have too much tension. So this person tells you don't don't dare share that number. I've come, I've shared, I've given a presser. So I I don't know if I'm safe. Because there is nothing much that we have done other than writing the statement. So am I safe? And I was told that I should not share that information with anyone. Yeah.